Hi there, all you beautiful people of YouTube and Facebook. It's Psychic Cynthia here, and welcome. Welcome to your Cosmic Forecast. And this is your September 11th, Friday, September 11th, 2020 Cosmic Forecast. And this is for the week ahead, and so this would be for the week of Monday, September 14th, all the way through Sunday, September 20th. And we'll also maybe look a little bit at this weekend, too, uh, for those of you who are catching it ahead of time. Um, so welcome, and coming up in the week ahead, the big star, you might say, is going to be the new moon in Virgo. And that's going to be on Thursday, so the date that I have for that is Thursday, September 17th. That's 2020, of course. And it's actually occurring, at least in the United States, in the, the early morning, like actually right around the time when people will be getting up. So, um, some people at least. Not me. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm a, not the earliest riser, not the latest either, just in between. But uh, this new moon will be hitting precise, exact at 6 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Again, that's on Thursday, September uh, 17th, September 17, 2020. If you're in the Eastern Time Zone, that will be 7 a.m., I believe, uh, Eastern United States Time Zone, I should say. Um, if you're in the Pacific Time Zone, you know, it's a little bit earlier, so uh, it's about uh, 4 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Um, and mountain time zone, that would be 5 a.m. if you observe daylight time. And if you don't observe daylight time, there's a few places that don't. I guess you'd probably need to, uh, um, well, adjust that somehow. I believe that you would need to um, subtract an hour. Is that right? Mm, I get that mixed around. So <laughs> I have to stop and think about it. Um, fall back, spring forward. Yeah, I think you would need to subtract an hour. But anyway, figure it out if you don't observe daylight time. And, and basically, it's going to be early Thursday morning when that hits exact. But up until then, I mean, it's almost like the week is divided into two chapters, two very different chapters. So let's just talk a little bit about that and, you know, how the energies will be moving and how you should be harmonizing with them in the first half of the week versus the second half of the week. And then also taking into account here the energies and themes that are happening right now as this video is coming out for this weekend. So, you know, just as you're signing on here, remember that Mars has now gone retrograde. And that happened on Wednesday, September 9th. That is a two-month-long transit uh, just for the transit proper, not counting you know, the shadow time that occurs before and after. So um, September 9th through November 13th, we have Mars. Hear me, Mars, not Mercury, Mars retrograde. Um, so this is a time to basically slow down, go deeper, prioritize, focus, realize that your energy levels are probably not going to be as high as they normally are. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, and, you know, always, always there's exceptions uh, to these, uh, you know, astrological energies. I mean, it's not really exceptions to the energies. It's just that some people might manifest it slightly differently. Um, so some people may feel energized by Mars retrograde. Um, typically, this tends to happen right at the beginning of the retrograde, if that's going to happen for you. Uh, and then the energy peters out later on. So, you know, if you are one of the people who's feeling a little bit more energized, and I know lately I've been feeling, even with this retrograde, maybe not so much physical energy more, but maybe more hopeful and upbeat and, and getting organized. That might not even be because of Mars retrograde, but it's happening at the same time. Um, so that's good. I mean, if you're feeling that, if you're kind of getting back into the swing of things, I mean, it is fall time. You know, it's that time of the year when we do want to get back naturally. It's just following nature and the pattern of the seasons, at least for those of us in the northern hemisphere. Now, for those of you down south, it's different. I get that. But, but even then, I mean, I just think, you know, we are swinging towards an equinox. 
and that that causes us to want to get more organized and maybe have some more energy. Uh, but still, be careful with that because with Mars retrograde, you need to pace yourself. So don't forget that, and that applies for this week and many weeks ahead over the next two months, all of the weeks ahead, actually. So do keep that in mind. And the other thing happening this weekend, which um, I don't think we covered in any, any of the forecast yet. So listen up. Uh, we have a wonderful Jupiter in Capricorn is going direct, not retrograde, direct forward motion again. Uh, and again, that's in Capricorn. And so when Jupiter goes direct after it, it's long retrograde, I think it's about four months or something like that, four, four and a half months. Um, you know, this is a time to go forward again with our spiritual vision with our higher dreams and ideals. Um, now with Mars being retrograde at the same time that Jupiter is going direct, you know, again, the physical energy may not be as strong there as we want, but there is still some. You can still use your energy and you can still make progress even during a Mars retrograde, especially now that Jupiter is going direct. So the, the trick is to stay focused on your higher goals and aims. And, and listen, if you're involved in any petty conflicts or, or maybe you just like to get worked up about what's going on in the world, and frankly, who doesn't right now? A little bit. <laughs> uh, remember, that's an indulgence, though. Uh, and just like with any other indulgence, you need to moderate that, um, getting worked up about things that are going on in the world. Uh, because that distracts you. That takes you away from your path. I mean, unless your path is getting worked up about things in the world, maybe, I don't know, maybe if you're a professional activist, that might make sense. But even then, you have to stay focused on your cause and your path and what you're called to do. And, and most of us aren't professional activists. Uh, most of us have a different uh, kind of calling. Maybe it is activism in a spiritual sense. Um, what I mean by that is being active. Okay, uh, so what's your calling? What's your passion? I mean, if you don't know, just look at what you really enjoy doing, what's important to you, or maybe you're a parent and your cause right now is raising the best children that you can, or you're a grandparent and your cause right now is loving those grandkids. That's wonderful if that's your cause. Now, not all of us are grandparents and, you know, Maybe we don't have our kids at home anymore, so we're not going to be focused on that. Uh, but I think all of us do have something that excites us, that uplifts us, that uh, helps us to connect with why we are here. So with Jupiter going direct, it's a good time to get back in the game again, so to speak. Uh, focus on your dharma, not your karma, <laughs> okay? And if you don't really know what those words mean, I mean, just simply... What I'm saying here is focus on what really matters, what's important, what's positive and uplifting, not the drama, not the drama. So this is a really good time to uh, step away from the drama. I mean, I think it's always could be a good time, but this week would be a good time to do that with Jupiter going direct. And especially with Mars being retrograde, you do need to be aware. I mean, it's not wise now to engage in unnecessary conflicts at this time. It's really... Maybe it's never wise. It's particularly unwise right now. The, um, when Mars is retrograde, it is a time to set down the shield, to set down the spear, um, at least if that is possible. And I do realize sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes, you know, a fight finds you. And if that's the case, you can prevail in Mars retrograde. But those who are, are uh, aggressors, those who antagonize those who, you know, start the fight, who initiate the fight. During Mars retrograde, those people go down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's not good. It's not good to be that person right now. So uh, this is relevant to the week ahead, but also to many, many weeks ahead. So uh, those are some of the themes that are operating this week, and you are going to feel them very strongly because Mars just went retrograde on Wednesday, September 19th. And Jupiter is going direct on this Saturday. I guess that would be Saturday, 
uh, well, the day after this video comes out, September 12th. So lots of energetic shift happening this weekend and then into the next week. Now, for this next week ahead, and again, that's Monday, September 14th, all the way through Sunday, September 20th. What we're going to be feeling is largely the influence of the new moon in Virgo. And that would be at 25 degrees Virgo. So if you have any natal planets or points positioned at 25 degrees Virgo, um, or really, I would say even maybe five degrees either side of that, or certainly three or four degrees. So that'd be 20, I don't know, 21. We can stretch it to 22, 22, 22 degrees Virgo, um, maybe all the way up to one degree uh, going into Libra. You know, I've got a friend that's born, uh, her son is born, is around this degree. So she's going to be really feeling these energies of this new moon. Uh, so anyway, around those degrees, and just close to 25 degrees Virgo, also 25 degrees Pisces, 25 degrees Gemini, and 25 degrees Sagittarius. So these, these points in your chart are going to be activated by this new moon. And we all have these somewhere. So if you're more savvy with astrology a little bit more, you can get your chart out and, and, and look at it and see what houses are. And listen, I can't look at your chart in the comments on these videos. If you want to arrange for a private session, that's great. But, uh, you know, you can't just rattle something off about a chart. You have to have the whole chart. You have to look at it and examine it. So, yeah, that's why I can't do that. I mean, I'd love to be able to do that, but I'd have to be a supercomputer. <laughs> okay, so, which most astrologers kind of are in their own way, but we do need some time to sit with the chart. Like, we're actually going to do a reading, you know, about somebody's chart in depth. So, but you can look at your own chart. I mean, there's so many places to get free charts now, so just find those degrees in your chart if you want to know more about what areas it might be affecting you personally. Um, and also, let's talk about that sign Virgo. I mean, even just knowing that, it's going to help you understand. Um, well, and first of all, understand for the week ahead that we're building up to the new moon, which is actually a form of winding down. So the theme for the first half of this week is winding down, winding down getting closure, tying up loose ends. And what you want to do, ideally Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, what you want to do of this week, and that would be September 14th, September 15th, September 16th, 2020. What you want to do on those days is focus on getting organized, cleaning, tying up loose ends, doing little repair stuff, and getting ready for the next, the new cycle ahead, if you can. If you're able to do that in any extent, whatever you're able to do that. So uh, even though I know, you know, in, in our society here in the West, you know, Mondays, that's a time to get off to a strong start, to get everything done for the week. And, and I get that, but you may actually find it easier to begin new projects towards the end of the week because of the energies this week. Does that make sense? Because, you know, it's going to be hard to really move forward until we actually have the new moon. We are at the very end of the lunar cycle. In other words, the lunar energies, which really do affect the day-to-day -day rhythm uh, of energy and movement, on, on Earth, it's, it's a very strong indicator, just like we know the moon pulls on the tides. The moon pulls on us, too, because we are mostly water. So with this being at the lowest part of the lunar energy right now, I mean, if you're watching this video before that new moon, we are at the lowest part of the lunar energy, and so it's more of a time of letting go of cleansing, of organizing, of getting ready, preparing. 
And yes, it can be a wonderful time to simply rest, conserve your energy. It's, it's in a way, it's like its own micro retrograde. Now, it's not a retrograde, understand, but it has some echoes of that energy. And especially with Mars being retrograde, uh, Mars represents our vital physical energy. So yes, the energy levels are a little bit lower physically. Now, spiritually, you may be more pumped up. You may be more energized. You may want to do a reading for yourself of some kind, a, a tarot reading, a rune reading, uh, just having a special time to set with your guides or the ancestors and um, the spirits and ask them for messages. I mean, this might be a great time uh, to hold a seance or a circle, uh, a very small one, I mean, with people that you know well. Uh, it's, it's not really a time to hold your big social events because people are more reflective during these lower lunar, lunar energies. We are more turned inward. So put your house in order this weekend and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before the new moon. Concentrate on um, just cleaning up, so to speak. I mean, however you want to apply that. And, you know, Releasing, letting go, eliminating. Maybe if you're going to take in anything, then you take in reflection, you take in contemplation, uh, you take in working with the runes, you take in uh, laying out your oracle cards or your tarot cards, you take in meditation, right? You absorb the spiritual vibrations. Does that make sense? Okay. But on Thursday morning, we have that wonderful new moon in Virgo. And so it all begins again then. And even at the time of the new moon, you may still be feeling a little bit low on energy. But that's the time to start taking some small, simple steps to get started to birth the new for the next 29 days ahead. You know, roughly one month. So in that time, you may want to... Uh, sit down and write out some goals and intentions like actually do that on Thursday morning write out just no more than one to three I would say one to three goals and intentions for the new moon month ahead and Virgo is a very practical down-to-earth energy it is very organized it is about getting our lives rearranged and running efficiently it is also uh, inspiring you to get back on your health regimens. I mean, I know with the quarantines and the lockdowns and all the craziness this year, um, a lot of us have been off our diets, you know, or we've kind of been on the, the carby diet, as I call it, you know, eating. Uh, I mean, not that carbs are bad, but I think, you know, a lot of us have been eating more sweets and more carbs and more of that than we need and gaining weight. Um, maybe you haven't been exercising like you normally would. So if, if any of that's true for you, or maybe you haven't been taking the vitamins that you like to take or making your herbal teas that you find beneficial, um, or who knows, maybe you haven't fallen off the bandwagon because you never got on the bandwagon yet, right? Well, it's a good time to get on the health uh, pattern, to start taking care of yourself when we have this new moon in, in Virgo. It, it, the universe gives you energy that will support you in your health and fitness goals. Uh, and especially in purity, you know, Virgo is a sign that seeks for perfection, for purity, um, in order to move us towards balance, which is the next sign, Libra. So you might start thinking about that. What is it you need to eliminate from your life or reduce in order to be more healthy on any level, not just the physical, in order to be more clear, in order to feel more aligned with your spiritual path. Um, I really do find that Virgo is a sign that connects with simplification. You know, let's simplify our lives. Let's remove the clutter. Let's take out what we don't need, what does not benefit us. Let's get back to basics. And this particular new moon in Virgo does have a nice, lovely trine to Capricorn. Again, that's on Thursday um, of this week ahead, Thursday, uh, September 17th, 
2020. And with that trying to Saturn, you know, success is within your reach. It's a, it's a natural help and aid to boost your, your practical world projects, your career projects, your, your finances even. You may find that you have ideas about doing that. And, and really, um, this new moon is not so much about ideas and even that trying to Saturn. It's not just about ideas. It's more about implementation. Earth signs don't care so much about ideas. I mean, ideas are great if they're, you know, interesting, but it's more about how well do these ideas actually work when applied, when activated. So you don't need a lot of ideas about what to do. You probably already have the ideas that you need. Now, if you don't seek the assistance of a wise counselor or a wise resource, to get you an idea. But I guess what I'm saying with this here is this is the time to actually be grounded and work on your real world life and actually do something about it, not just talk about what you might do, but actually take steps. Um, I mean, for example, if you've not been feeling good lately, and I know many people don't feel as good, some some people, not every everybody, it's different for each person, but some people don't feel as good when that transition happens into the fall, then, you know, what steps are you going to take to help yourself feel better? I mean, whether it's getting out of bed a little bit earlier so that you can stretch before you begin your day, which is a very helpful practice for most people, um, can help on so many levels. If you can just do 15 minutes of that or even 5 or 10, that will uh, help, you know, your circulation, your your mind, your your overall sense of well-being, okay? <laughs> um, so that's an example. I mean, but what is it you need to do? And, and listen, don't be draconian about it. On the other hand, you know, don't take this to an extreme. And, and I don't think you will, hopefully, because Virgo is a very moderated sign. Actually, the only thing it can take to extreme is perfectionism. So remember, it's more important to take a positive action and to just do that positive action than to worry about doing it perfectly. You know, when I'm working with my RIN students, as I'll be doing this weekend, um, you know, we'll go over, there's 24 RINs, and we'll go over them eight at a time, and we'll do the first eight, and then I often will have them go ahead and do readings for each other using just eight RINs. They only know one-third of it, but I want them to get started where they're at. Wherever you're at, you know, if you just have any knowledge or any any one thing that you can do, just do it. Okay, don't wait until you're perfect. Don't wait until you know it all. Uh, because, by the way, you'll never know it all. None of us will ever know it all. I don't know about you, but I'm still learning every day. Uh, I'm mainly still learning how much I do not know. <laughs> so, anyway, um, on those notes, I hope that you have a wonderful new start to your new cycle ahead. Focus on some spiritual cleansing. Maybe get yourself into a cleansing bath this week uh, using some cleansing herbs or some uh, consecrated salts um, or just using your intention. But yes, cleanse, release, let go, and get started getting yourself organized on the financial and real world levels, you know, dealing with your health and also maybe with your spiritual discipline. It's a great time to actually create a schedule for working with your meditation and your divination tools. Um, get back on a schedule. It's time to get back to business, so to speak. Um, hope you found this forecast helpful. Thank you so much for spending time here with me on my Psychic Cynthia channel. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing. And I want to leave you all with the blessings of cosmos for you and yours. May this new moon week ahead bring you much peace and higher vision. And so it is. Bright blessings. <laughs>